Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to quickly trace out a low voltage short on an HVAC unit. So this is a gas furnace. Right here we have the power disconnected here and up at the switch. And what happens when you have a low voltage short is your fuse, which is either a 3 amp or a 5 amp, it keeps blowing. So it's opening up the electrical circuit, but the whole point of this is to protect the transformer, which in this case, you have your wires from the transformer here and your transformers up in there. And the point of the fuse is to be on your hot wire. And essentially what's happening is you're going to have a direct short, which is going to cause the fuse to blow. So it's something like this is actually happening within the gas furnace when a fuse blows. Now it could blow just due to over current. So if there's something that's drawing a high current on the low voltage circuit, that could happen too. But if you're just turning the power on and it keeps popping the fuse, I'm going to show you how to quickly troubleshoot that with a multimeter. Now, a direct short could be in your thermostat wire from your control board to your thermostat. It could be the, the thermostat wire or the low voltage wire from your control board to your outdoor unit. In this case, this basically is replicating your whole outdoor condensing unit because if you have two wires going out there, it's just going to the, the contactor quill. So this is exactly what would be happening in the field. This thermostat wire would run through the, through the building over to your thermostat within the building. I just kind of have everything real close here so you can see everything. And the problem could be your thermostat or the thermostat wire connecting the indoor control board to the thermostat maybe it got squished by a staple or maybe a mouse has chewed it and your hot is touching your your common or maybe it's the low voltage wire heading out to the outdoor air conditioning unit and maybe that's rubbing up against the ground frame or maybe the component out here is shorted and bad you could have that being the problem you could have the low voltage wiring that goes from the control board up to the safety switches maybe the wiring is shorted the ground or maybe one of the switches is shorted the ground maybe the control board here is just shorted inside and, and the control board itself is bad. But I wanna give you some simple ways to figure out what this problem is. And one is just by turning the fan on, if, if nothing trips and the fuse does not pop when you turn the power to the furnace on, but it does trip when you turn the fan on, well, what's happening is when you turn the fan on, R, C, and G are touching each other. And so what happens is if R is your main power wire coming out of the control board, Inside your thermostat, when you turn fan on, R and G are touching, and now G is your power wire. So if G is your power wire and it's shorted to the common, it's going to make the, the fuse open up. Now, if you are turning air conditioning on, your RC is gonna to touch Y and G, and, the, and the, uh, the yellow wire and the green wire are both gonna become hot. And so right here, this is hot, and now this is hot. So if your, your Y wire is touching the ground frame somewhere and it's going to end up shorting and popping the fuse. So if that's happening when you turn just your air conditioning on and you turn your thermostat down, you know what the problem is. It's your, your yellow wire. If it happens during air conditioning mode and not just when you turn your fan on because now it's just your yellow wire that could potentially be the problem. So just so you know, you have an additional wire typically when you run your thermostat wires. Right now we have five wires so one, two, three, four, five. And so what you can do is you usually run a sixth wire. So you can switch that yellow wire out with this brown wire. And so you'd switch it out here and here in order to resolve your problem. So if you were to turn heat on, and that's when the fuse ends up tripping, it could be that your white wire is shorted to the ground frame. So the white wire in that case will be the one that you'd wanna switch out with your spare wire. So now if you don't know what your problem is and maybe the fuse is shorting immediately right when you turn the power on, what we want to do is we want to isolate sections of wire from the other sections of wire inside the furnace in order to make this into a simple diagnosis. So what we're going to do is we're going to first disconnect this thermostat wire and this one, but we're going to leave the common in place. And the reason for that is, is the common and ground touch. And so if you were to test a resistance value between common and ground right here, so we read 0.2 ohms. So when you have a direct connection, it should be 0 0.0 or 0.1 or 0.2, somewhere around in that area. So you can see right when I put my probes together, we should be reading 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance. So in this case, we're reading at right about 0 0.10. Okay, good. So what we're really looking for is a short between a potential power wire and the common or ground, and we're gonna leave the common and ground connected right here. 
Now we're going to test these wires. So we're going to put one probe right on the common and we'll put our alligator clip right on our R wire, which is our red. You see OL. And now we can do this when the thermostat is on. Right now we're just doing it with the thermostat off just to test the wires. But it could be that the thermostat is bad as well. Now right here you see that we're measuring 16 ohms. And that's on this red wire, which is actually the, the wire for the, the outdoor coil right here, which is on the contactor. So if you notice right here, that is not a problem. That's just the resistance value of the coil itself. See, we're reading 16 ohms. So that's not the problem. What we're really looking for is something about 0.5 ohm or less, and that would be our issue. Okay, so now we know that it's not our red power wire, it's not our Y wires. Let's test our W wire. You see we're reading OL right there. And now let's test our green wire, which is for our G. So we read OL. So that, that shows us that we know this wire is not the problem and our outdoor wire is not the problem. We'll also know that our component is not the problem because we read OL for all these wires and we read 16 ohms for this coil. So that's, that's all good. Now we can do this again with the thermostat on. So if the fuse is blowing when you're not turning anything on, we can leave it just like that on the thermostat in the off position and auto. We can do these tests again just to make sure This time we're reading in mega ohms. So 7.6 mega ohms. And so mega ohms is very close to OL. So that's not the problem. OL right there. OL again. And OL. So we know our thermostat is not the problem. So now we've isolated both our thermostat wire, our thermostat, our outdoor wire, and our outdoor contactor. And now we want to start looking into our safety wires heading up to the outdoor unit. So what we want to do next is we're just going to disconnect this wiring harness and then we're going to want to move up to the, the upper location up here. Our low voltage wiring harness has been disconnected and the only other wires that are on this board uh, that are low voltage are going to your transformer right here. But we have the transformer disconnected because we've taken the fuse out right here. So all this is your high voltage wiring and these black boxes here are for your relays, for your blower motor, your inducer motor, your hot surface igniter. So we're going to head up and, and check these wires and components out. But the only other thing left to test after that would be the control board and you want to wait till last for that. And you can test the resistance value between R and C with your fuse pulled in order to see if there's an internal short, but you want to avoid that as a very last possible thing because what happens is you could accidentally damage your control board by testing the resistance value with your multimeter because the multimeter sends a low current through the control board in order to test the resistance value between R and C. Uh, in most cases it's not going to harm the board but you do want to wait to the last case in order to test that. So now let's head up. So now we're up at the top and I want to give you a quick little tour. Right here is your common slash ground. You can see it's connected right here to the ground frame so you know your common and ground are touching. Then you have your thermal limit switch right here, another thermal limit switch. Here you have a flame rollout switch back there, and you have another flame rollout switch back here. We have our harness up here just so we can do our testing up here. And in some cases, on, well, on most newer gas furnaces, you have your flame rollout switch separate from your thermal limit switches. But in this case, they're all going from, from one wire through to the other wire. So you have a hot from the control board coming through and coming back to the control board and all these switches are normally closed. And then right here you have your, your common slash ground wire. Now I'm going to measure the resistance of the wires. So right here we're going to put our probe on the back on the exposed terminals. We're not going to try to press it in there because that would deform the connector. So we're going to press that right there and we're going to also put our other uh, probe right on the red wire you see that we're reading 0.1 ohms. So we're gonna have the same exact reading on here as long as all the switches are closed. So you see that that's certainly the problem. So now we know for a fact that our sensor wires or the sensors themselves are shorted to the ground frame. They're not shorted to say the common because the only thing common up here is the gas valve. So 
that's going to be the issue. So now to separate these even further to know which sensors uh, and wires are bad, what we do is we just separate this by pulling one more wire out just like that. Of course, we can just visually look at this point. We could probably find where the wire is. It probably just shorted to the ground frame or somewhere. Uh, but now what we can do is we can measure this again and we can kind of keep limiting down the area in which we need to visually inspect. So right there, 0.2 ohms. So if we check this one, it's probably going to be OL. See right there, OL. So we know that whatever's connected to this wire is not the problem. Whatever is connected to this wire, that is what the problem is. So we could look at our wiring diagram and see what this is connected to, or we can just visually trace it out. So here's where our problem wire is. And if you can see this right here, this was where, where it was rubbing up against the ground frame. So I don't know if you can see the inside right there, if you can see the wire, but that's, that's where it was rubbing up against the ground frame. And so that's what you need to do. You need to be able to split the sections of wire apart from each other in order to determine where the problem is. You have to keep splitting it apart in half and then test that half, split it apart again, test that half in order to try to basically isolate where the problem is located at. So that's it. That's how you would troubleshoot a low voltage short. If you want to look for more resources for HVACR training, check out our website at acservicetech.com. And also make sure to check out our articles, calculators, quizzes, and tips. Also make sure to check out our air conditioning book. So we have the full outline of that over at our website at acservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.